All right. Hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And what an incredible night we had here with the Cheval Blanc wines. And uh, 15 lucky tasters all the way back to 1949. And, you know, one of the things I always think, man, I'm opening up these wines too soon, especially the old ones. We want to wait and open them and pour them just before the people drink them. And wrong again. Let me tell you, the 49 was still good on the second day. The 53, incredible on the second morning. And I always keep wines now just a little bit in the glass with my little card over the top of them just to see how they're going to show the second day. To me, that is the sign of a great wine. And Cheval Blanc, of course, one of the greatest wines in Bordeaux. A very unique wine. This was once pro part of the Fijac property in St. Emilion. It's right on the dividing line. Uh, it's borders right on the Pomerol, the road that is the dividing line between Pomerol and St. Emilion. And a very unique blend, oftentimes a predominantly Cabernet Franc and the rest Merlot. And uh, this is a wine that has that structure from the Cabernet, but has that lovely, velvety, smooth texture of Merlot. It is really unique and uh, one of the great wines of Bordeaux. To be able to taste a uh, you know, vertical selection, eight vintages on the table going back to 49, truly a once-in-a-lifetime occasion. The 49, wow, still a stunning array of earthy, truffly, cedar, mint notes in this really complex, showing evolution, but got better and better after it sat in the glass. And uh, soft as silk on the tongue. This wine had this lovely sweet and tangy red berry, currant fruit, cherry, exotic spices, that mint and cedar in the nose and black truffle showing through on the finish. Wow, still fantastic on the second day. Most excellent. This wine got six or five or six votes for wine of the night. But the 53 out of half bottle, 15 votes for wine of the night. And we had two half bottles. The first bottle was remarkably better than the second one. And... Uh, even richer than the 49 on a half bottle. Unbelievable. Had a little bit of volatile city on the nose, but this blew off after it was opened a bit. Had a lovely aroma of black truffles, clay-like mineral notes, red plum, currant fruits. Really a revelation, man. This wine's still very much alive. And a lot of sweet fruit and exotic cedar spice showing through. Smoke. A really long finish. And uh, on the second day, even better. Like I said, hands down the wine of the night. Everybody voted for this. We gave people two votes for wine of the night. This got 15. The second bottle, still really nice, man. On the second day, you know, this one was just not quite as rich as the first one, but very similar. And uh, just amazing the difference between, uh, you know, from bottle to bottle. I think when you show wines in half bottle, you even get more of a difference. And they're supposed to age quicker. I'd love to have this 53 in a full format. The 50. Cheval Blanc, one of the greatest old Bordeaux I have ever had, as was the 53. Two great old vintages for Cheval. The 82, this wine's still a baby. I should have opened this wine up in the morning. It started to really uh, show up on the second day here. Coffee and toffee nuance to that cherry and currant berry fruit. And, uh, man, just incredible concentration and richness in this wine. Sweet red berry fruit on the tongue, plum and cherry, an array of exotic spices that truffle the mints. And uh, quite firm and tannic here on the first day. It was not nearly as showy as it was on the second day, but this wine is a blockbuster. And it got no votes for wine of the night. I couldn't believe that, uh, but I should have opened it in the morning. It's my fault, but this wine... Definitely would have got votes for first place if we'd opened the day before, really showing a lot more smoothness on the palate, those tannins mellowing out, and even more fruit on the second day. It would have got uh, a vote for me for wine of the night, even though I only got two votes, so I did it for 53 and 90. But the 85 was another one that got a lot of votes, nine votes for uh, first or second. And this wine is all about balance as the 85 vintage is really smooth and silky on the tongue, like velvet. And this wine had an array of coffee, mint, tobacco, just incredible balance, long finish with ripe fat fruit and uh, drinkable right out of the bottle. This was one that uh, really didn't have to wait too long for. That's why people loved it. Several people said uh, man, the 85 is one of the greatest, Shovel Blanc, one of the greatest wines that they had ever had. And uh, this wine was not as good as the 82 on the second day, but like I said, the first day we opened it, a lot of votes for first place. Definitely the second wine. Second favorite wine of the night on the table, the 86, a tannic monster. And this vintage, always a really well-built vintage, some plum and currant berry fruit, showing that lovely, smoky, truffly, earthy note there. And uh, like velvet on the tongue, but a host of tannin showing up at the end. And, uh, you know, Cheval Blanc is all about elegance. This wine would have been better. Also, if I opened it the night before, because on the second day, it was amazing how much richer this wine had become and the tannins had smoothed out. And this wine needs another 20 years. Most excellent juice, though. And um, I don't think we got one, one vote for wine of the night. The 90, on the other hand, got a few.
One was mine, so and I like the ninety vintage as a whole. I think it's one of the greatest vintages in Bordeaux in the last fifty years. And uh this wine was almost port like a lot of really sweet plum, exotic spices, black truffle mint, really rich and well endowed wine, a thick and chewy wine on the palate, almost liqueur like in concentration with the fruit, and uh wow, man. This wine on the second day was just amazing. It really, you know, again, you know, you think you open up, you don't want to open up wine too too soon. You want to let people sh see how it is as it opens up. But this 90 needed a day to open up. Incredible richness here. Amazing the morning after. Killer juice. Two wines got killer scores for me. That's my highest score. The 53 and the 90 Cheval Blanc, the two wines I voted for. And then the 96. I love the 96 vintage also. This wine had a host of dark plum fruit, exotic spices, truffle, fresh earth, coffee, and more. A bit lighter, um, but it did come after the monumental 1990 vintage. And uh, this wine was smooth and velvety on the tongue also a lot of tannins here a lot of that exotic spice and uh really rich on the second day the 90 vintage needs a little bit 96 vintage rather just needs a little bit more time like the 90 vintage most excellent juice i strongly recommend this wine is it's one of the best buys on the table as was the uh the 90 the 85 the 1990 really dark plum cherry mint truffle it's just starting to sound like a recorded message well, all the wines, very typical characteristics of Cheval Blanc. The 99 vintage, a very forward vintage. This is a vintage, definitely seemed a little bit lighter. It was the underling of all the wines on the table, but still, excellent juice. You know, Cheval Blanc is one of those wines every year. It has that textbook mint, truffle, earthiness to it. Plummy, really rich fruit, really lovely uh, texture, really velvety and smooth on your palate. And this 99 has got some years to go, but you don't want to keep it as long as the 96 or the 90. Really drinking nicely right now. And then, of course, we had Doug Martin there, so you know what that means. Chateau you come for dessert. And um, he graced us with the 2002 Chateau you Chem's presence on this evening in this 2002. Drinking beautifully. Not a great vintage in Bordeaux, but the conditions for making sauternes very different from making the dry red wines. This wine had a lovely kind of peach and candied pineapple fruit to it. Honey, uh, just incredibly decadent and smooth and creamy on the palate with lovely freshness and acidity at the end. Wonderful balance. There is nothing like Chef de Yacam. Thank you very much uh, for bringing that, Doug. Thank you very much to Bob and Veronica for providing all the Cheval Blanc from their cellar. What an, another incredible evening here at the Wine Watch. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember... Always drink the good stuff first.